This is going to be good. It's a lot of this. Percy is a little green saddle tank engine who works in the yard at the big station on the Northwestern Railway. He is a funny little engine who loves to play practical jokes. These jokes sometimes get him into trouble. One morning, he pulled alongside Gordon as he dozed in a shed and whistled. Hurry up, Gordon! Your train is ready! What? Percy laughed and showed him a dirty goods train. A, a goods train? <laughs> Gordon didn't go back to the shed. He stayed where he was thinking of how he could pay Percy out. A goods train, oh the shame of it. Later that day, Percy played a joke on James. Stay in the shed today. The fat controller will come and see you. Ah, the fat controller knows what a fine engine I am, ready for anything. He wants me to pull a special train. Oh, maybe it's a Pullman special. James, being a vain and conceited engine, questioned nothing. But the fat controller never came, and the other engines grumbled dreadfully. They had to do James's work as well as their own. At last, an inspector came. Show Wheel James, you can't stay here all day. The fat controller told me to stay here. He sent a message this morning. He did not. How could he? He's away for a week. Oh. Oh. Where's Percy? Percy had wisely disappeared. When the fat controller came back, he did see James, and Percy too. Both engines wished he hadn't. James and Gordon wanted to pay Percy out, but Percy kept out of the way. One morning, however, he was so excited that he forgot to be careful. I say, you engines, I'm to take some trucks to Thompson's Junction. The fat controller chose me especially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. Huh. More likely he wants you out of the way after all that truck. Hi, oh, James! Uh, yes, uh, just so. Huh. You were saying, Gordon? Oh, uh, <laughs> James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals, but I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. Percy felt flattered. Of course not. We had spoken of backing signals. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James. I know all about backing signals. James and Gordon solemnly exchanged winks as Percy puffed away to fetch his trucks. Percy was a little worried when he set out. He puffed crossly to his trucks and felt better. Later, as he approached Thomas's junction, he saw a signal at danger. Oh, 
Nothing. It's at danger. Oh, 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 oh. What was that for? The signal's at danger. Don't expect me to pass a signal at danger. Percy waited a while. Soon, though, the signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen that sort of signal before. He was surprised and then thought to himself. Down means go and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. I know it's one of those backing signals. How clever of me. His driver interrupted his train of thought and called out to him. Go on, Percy. Off we go. But Percy didn't go forward. His driver had to let him back in order to start it all. I am clever. Even driver doesn't know about backing signals. Whoa, Percy, stop. You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal. Percy protested and told his driver about what Gordon and James had told him. His driver laughed and explained about signals that point up. L, why did I believe those sleek big engines? Let's start up quickly before they come and see us. But it was too late. Gordon swept by with the express and saw everything. Percy was soon on his way to Thomas' junction, where he was waiting to collect his trucks. What's the matter with you, Percy? <sighs> Old Gordon and James made up a silly story about a special kind of signal and I fell for it. Gordon passed and saw everything. From what I heard, it wasn't unprovoked. You heard what I did to James, eh? <laughs> yeah. The past few weeks, whenever Gordon, James, or Henry stop here, they're always learning about how they wish I could come back. But I always explain to them that Farquhar is the most important part of the Sudrian countryside, and that the pack controller depends on me to run it. I do envy you, Thomas. I hope I can work here with you someday. If you stop playing jokes so often, maybe you will. Playing jokes on the big engines, especially Gordon, never got me into anything but trouble. Oh well. You better top up on water and get back, Percy. You're going to be in for a rough night tonight. Wait, what do you mean I'm in for a rough night? But Percy would soon find out what Thomas meant much to his dismay after he topped off on water and headed home that night for the sheds. When he pulled up to the sheds, Gordon was telling Henry and James everything. Gordon was the first to speak to Percy. Now you see, Percy. This is why the tank engines aren't meant to go any further than the yard. <laughs> Honestly, Percy, a backing signal? <laughs> Whatever possessed you to believe us? What about Thomas and Toby? They don't work in the yard. They work the far car branch line all by themselves. You really think that means something, Percy? The Fat Controller only gave Thomas that glorified siding because that old useless coffee pot that used to work it finally retired. And Toby, huh, well, he's only good for pulling workmen to work in that old clapped out coach of his. And besides, your place is here, fetching our coaches and trucks. Now, now, go to sleep, little Percy. You're to fetch my coaches extra early for tomorrow. For the wild nor'wester, while us big engines get ready for the real work. <laughs> and with that, the big engines all went to sleep feeling that they had educated Percy enough on their locomotive hierarchy. But Percy, 
Percy didn't go to sleep. He stayed up thinking about what they had said and came to the conclusion that they were being silly. He was just as useful as any other engine. And finally drifted into an uneasy sleep. <laughs>